Welcome to the Global Author Podcast. I'm Matt Connor Whiteley, science fiction, fantasy, and a global author, bringing you publishing, writing, book marketing, and a global author ideas of your book to help you sell more books and write better books. For more information and your free global author training, please go to theglobalauthor.com. And here's the show. Hi everyone and welcome to episode 40 of the Global Author Podcast with me, Colin Whiteley. And today's episode is on what clauses do writers need to watch out for in a publishing contract. And it is Friday, the 26th of March 2021 as I record this. So we're continuing on from last week and this is such a critical episode for writers. Whether you do want to get a traditional publishing contract or in the future you get to license your gaming rights, your movie rights or anything. And I also just want to note though that I was doing a course by Dean Wesley Smith um, recently and he said that any books in KU, Hollywood, etc, they pretty much look at your book as if it's garbage and they will never approach you with a licensing deal to maybe get you like a TV option okay, or anything quite like that. So that I just wanted to mention quite quickly, but I really enjoyed this episode. So we're moving on to a quick personal update before we get on to with today's episode. So quite a lot of interesting things have like happened though, like not just with like university though, but yesterday I had quite an interesting writing day because it turns out that I got £50 with the author's um, collection and licensing service, which is a UK based well, based one, which basically means that you get paid. Well, after you've well, like, registered your books like, with them, um, you uh, get paid whenever someone photocopies your books, takes uh, like, takes it out from a library, and all of those little other ways that where traditionally we would be losing um, like money there. So basically, last year I put my books on there thinking, right. I'm never going to make any money from this or um, if I do I will get like two pounds or something but yesterday I found I made 50 pounds and then they take a commission and then you have to pay your membership for you which comes out of the money you earn it's like you don't have to pay like up front so I got 10 pounds at 28 pence overall but I'm thinking wow that's amazing considering I didn't put all my books on there and also considering that how low my ex- expectations were I was on. I was honestly amazed. Then I spent about an hour and a half putting the rest of my books on there. So I'm really, really looking forward to that um, income stream over the next few years. I think it has amazing potential. And if you're in the UK, you've got to look at that. You really, really have to. And if you're not in like the UK, I would definitely recommend you just like um, checking out your local country, your local country, <laughs> to try and find a local a equivalent. And then another quite nice surprise that I got yesterday was it turns out that I sold 56 copies of a single book in one night by Ingram Spark, which I was amazed at because, <laughs> yeah, that's never happened before in the slightest though. So the reason why I'm telling, yeah, so the reason why I'm telling you this is just that you know that if you don't put your books wide or if you only put your books on Amazon. And also if you don't um, publish wide or uh, be uh, a global author and uh, basically if you don't uh, put your book everywhere that you can you'll never know where your book could uh, take off though because the thing about this uh, 56 uh, copies of thing though was that it was for an annual psychology book like third edition that's going to be released like um, next month so this was a print pre-order so I had no idea that this was going to happen because my book was available it could happen and thankfully it did. Do I expect it to ever happen again? Maybe in a few years or maybe when I'm a bit more at a higher author level, but no. But this I thought was just amazing. So I really wanted to share this story with you to hopefully inspire some of you to put your books wide, to put your books global, just so this could happen to you. And as I recall this, my Kickstarter deadline was last night. And yes, it failed. It's still, yeah, well, like I still managed to get 400 and um 44 pounds which is still amazing and i'm honestly amazed that i met some amazing people there but also though yes it failed but i really learned a lot about this and that's what next week's episode is is like going to be about because i want to share some of the lessons and i'm also think basically to me kickstarter now is unless i have a specific project Whenever I go to release any sort of fiction book, I will do a Kickstarter first because it's a great way to raise money that way. So, for example, right now I have two books on pre-order. Yeah, but I asked it as a pre-order for the 
yeah, for the last week of July because the publisher part of me is hoping that we're going to be allowed to go on holiday in August and if you've been around the publishing industry for a while, August, November and December, they tend to be the major months because people will tend to go on holiday and buy books for when they go on holiday. So anyway, though, but so, and I also plan to write the rest of the series like before August though. So what happens, so what's going to happen though is in about June, I'm going to be running a, a Kickstarter. Yeah, but like a Kickstarter just so I can cover the costs of like that a series though. But I'm also just like going to do it to, to try and get a bit of uh, money though because because Kickstarter is another marketplace. And if I can make, I don't know, like 400, yeah, but like 200, 300, 400 pounds or, <laughs> or hopefully more though before I even release the books, then that is amazing because again, though, it's money I didn't have before. So you sort of just need to, you sort of really need to think about it uh, and just stuff like that. So I really hope that that was like a useful personal update though so as always i always love to know your thoughts and feelings on today's episode so you can so you can always email me conwiley conwiley.net you can always leave a comment at the show notes at the global author.com forward slash podcast and you can always tweet me on twitter at the global author and this episode has been sponsored by the alliance of independent authors because again though because like this week we're back to copyright and i cannot stress how great the alliance of independent authors are for like if you have a copyright question a legal question or anything to do with your contract server because if you become a member of the alliance of, of independent authors then you can send them a legal contract or like just so they can like, look over it and make sure that you and your copyright are protected though so it's really really important and they have the amazing face facebook group and they also have the amazing Ingram Sark discount, which I absolutely love. So if you want to use my affiliate link, I'll get a small percentage of the income and no extra cost to you. Then please go to theglobalauthor.com forward slash alliance. So that's enough of the personal update. Let's move on to the content part of today's episode. So we're moving on to the content part of today's episode. So we are looking at what clauses do writers need to watch out for in the publishing contracts. So this I really wish i'd learned back in the day so yeah because yeah because if you go back to episode one i probably mentioned it there but because i yes i put because of clauses and because of stuff i and because of publishing contracts i've lost one of my books forever so yeah so um that's not good but now that i've learned it so i know what to look out for and i really want to make sure you do as well just so you are protected because i really don't want you to lose your intellectual property so they're like when i say publishing contracts i'm talking about traditional publishing contracts but these clauses can and they do um apply for film tv drama gaming and pretty much any other rights related to your story not your book because that in itself is aligned but your story and your intellectual property but also please note i I am not a lawyer and this is not any sort of official legal advice so the first one that i really recommend is you must only license certain rights and territories so if you get a publishing contract 99 percent of all publishing contracts they will want all rights in all formats in all territories and languages as i said last week do not sign these i cannot stress that enough just go back to the publisher and say that and just license them the rights they will actually use because of if you license ebook or payback rights, fine, fair enough. But if you release audiobook rights, they will not use any rights except payback and ebook. Most are probably though. Most are probably though. Or I'm going to mention this in a moment, but make sure that the contract says that I will license that right to you, but if you don't use it within X years, it reverts back to me. So you need this in writing, but you get the general idea. So the overall idea of licensing is that the publisher wants to get as many rights as possible, whereas you want to license as few rights as possible for as short as possible. And again, though, you only ever license rights. You do not sell them because if you sell them, you lose them. Never do that. So reversion rights. Wish I had these in my publishing contract. (laughs) As I briefly touched upon in the last section, you need to make sure your rights revert back to you at some point. I'm so annoyed that I did not 
do this for my book. So the first reason why you need to make sure that your rights do revert back to you at some point is to make sure any rights the publisher doesn't use is returned so you can do something with these rights. Then the other reason is that you can go somewhere else with these rights. So your publisher might make use of the ebook rights and they might produce a really expensive ebook that is really badly formatted, meaning that when you get the rights back, you can either self publish it or license the ebook rights to someone else who's actually going to do a good job at it. Basically, in your contracts, make sure you get your rights back at some point. Then another one is what happens if the publishers go bust or are brought? This is really important, especially when you were, yes, when you would consider the thousands of books there's probably hundreds of thousands of books that that are going to be orphaned if the Simon & Schuster and the Penguin Random House merger goes through. So this one is quite interesting, but it is really important because if your publisher shuts down or merges, then your book could remain the same. So it could still be out there, it could still be making you money, you could still be earning royalties, or it could be orphaned. And because the rights don't revert back to you, your IP is still out there, but the publisher is closed or merged, meaning you can't legally do anything with your IP because you don't own it anymore. But the publisher isn't doing it, isn't doing anything anymore. So it's a horrible situation because your book's just there. In fact, now because they've probably unpublished it. So your IP is just being unused, but you can't do anything with it because you don't legally own it anymore. So this is why it's really important to get the clause in the contract that is sort of like this though. Of course, it can be a completely different wording, but you will get the idea. So upon the publisher declaring bankruptcy, closing operations, merging or etc. Publisher agrees to the all rights back to the author within one month of the decision occurring. Again though, it will not be like that, but you get the idea. Some, some sort of clause like that. And you can probably guess I did not have this clause in my contract. I say thankfully, but I'm not too sure if that is like too thankful. But thankfully, the publisher is still going. <laughs> I don't know why I laughed just then. I think that's more of a like um, upset a laugh. So but the last one is... And yes, there were lots of clauses, clauses, but these are major ones. And there were probably some other quite important ones I've left out. But I would say these are the top four that you've got to be careful of. So, but the last one is, we have the rise to all future works. Well, I cannot believe some publishers actually put this clause in. So this clause is extremely rare. And thankfully, the contract I signed did not. But I know Joanna Penn, um, she was um, presented with a contract like this. So, so if you see this contract, I say just run. Run for the hills, run for the stream, run across the Atlantic, I would say, and just get away from that publisher because you probably don't want to be doing business with these people because if you do sign a contract that has that clause in, then you will be giving the publisher the rights and money to all future works, including short stories, self-published works and everything because the idea behind it legally or the publisher's idea is that because they've published a book um, all your other success and all the other money that you make will be because of them yeah i know that's bad so just avoid that clause like the um plague so i really hope that you enjoyed today's episode so i cannot stress how important copyright is to learn as the writers because this is how we make our money so if you know someone who would enjoy today's episode then now please tell them about it i'm always really grateful when you wonderful people spread the word about the podcast also please check out the alliance of, of independent authors and you can use my affiliate link at theglobalauthor.com forward slash alliance so have a great day everyone and i'll see you next time thanks uh, for listening today i hope you found it useful for more information please go to theglobalauthor.com and if you want to connect then please reach out to me on twitter at theglobalauthor and you can find me on facebook for your free and exclusive global author video training please go to theglobalauthor.com forward slash free have a great day everyone and i'll see you next time